So as you all might know, Bistock 360 is, uh, a, is a product aimed for uh, providing operations, monitoring, and analytical solution to your Bistock environment. And at the moment, uh, we, are, uh, we can proudly say that uh, we've uh, uh, achieved 500 plus customers. Uh, managing uh, over 2,000 environments, and uh, that 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 includes uh, companies across um, 25 con different countries. Just a quick recap of how it all started. Uh, the first version of the product was released in 2011, which was a silver light version, and then from then on, the product has been improved quite a lot uh, from silver light. Uh, 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 version to HTML um, uh, somewhere in 7.0 and then uh, at the moment we are looking at version 8.4 which was released uh, in April 2017. So this is a, re a quick recap of how it all started. Uh, on an average we aim to release three to four uh, versions every year that includes uh, which includes new features and enhancements to the existing ones and of course all the bug fixes. Uh, as much as possible. Um, so the uh, today's session is going to be presented by Srini Vasamhayendrakar and uh, Srini comes from a very strong background in Bistok and he joined Bistok 360 um, uh, I, I, nine, month, nine, nine months ago. Prior to that he was working in another uh, uh, engagement where Bistok 360 was heavily used so he kind of knows the product in and out from a user perspective and also now from a development perspective. So the presentation. Thank you. Thank you for listening. Over to you, Srini. Yeah. Thank you very much, Gauri. Um, hi, everyone. Uh, good afternoon and uh, good morning and uh, good evening to some of you who are in different geographic locations. My name is Srinivas Amahendrakar and I'm a technical lead at uh, Bistock 360. Uh, welcome to the webinar and in this webinar we will go through the new features and the enhancements that we brought into Bistock 360's latest release 8.4. I'll quickly give you an overview of all these new features and enhancements and then we will jump into uh, the demonstration where you, you can witness these features in action. First of all, I must say that uh, we are uh, 8.4 release is very exciting because it's a kind of testimonial for our endeavor to address the customer needs and uh, bring those features which are really matter to them. And one of those features uh, was file location monitoring. Uh, people really wanted to monitor those, those file locations were based on the message count, whether it is a local file location or a network location or a FTP or SFTP location. So now with this feature, you will be able to monitor those folder locations which are configured under your ports uh, for the messaging count. The similar story for the IBM MQ monitoring. Uh, now with this features, you will be able to monitor your MQs regardless of whether you are using a uh, MQ series adapter or a MQ SC adapter which is a part of host integration server. Uh, you will be able to monitor those queues and also the backout queues for the usage and the messaging count. So the third one is really interesting. You know, many customers implement their Bistock environments and they're not really sure whether the licenses that have purchased really cover their environment or not. So with this new widget that we brought in, it clearly gets into your environments and gives, uh, identifies the number of cores and identifies the addition of the BizTalk server and determines the number of licenses that you needed and an approximate pricing for it. So now clearly you can compare the number that you have bought and the number which is really required. And if there is a mismatch, you know what you have to do. So the fourth one, uh, BizTalk 360, re re 360 recently is aligning with the latest trends in the you know hybrid integration and uh, you have seen in 8.3 release we have brought in uh, logic cap operational capabilities and even the, the releases before we have brought in Azure service per SKU monitoring capabilities. So now in 8.4 we are continuing that story and wherein we are giving you a capability to monitor uh, monitor your logic caps for the various metrics they are emitted. Uh, for example, uh, you will be able to monitor them based on the billing information, the number of successful runs, number of failures, etc. So 
that's a, that's a story which aligns our product with the, with with the Microsoft Azure. So the uh, next one is uh, BizTalk and the SQL NT services. We did had you know monitoring capability on NT services in the previous releases, but with in 8.4 we are bringing you uh, the operational capability wherein you will be able to uh, start, stop, resume, and you know uh, resume and um, uh, start these uh, services services so the similar thing for the SQL server jobs SQL server jobs are really important for health of your BizTalk environment and uh, we already had monitoring capability and the autocorrect capabilities into BizTalk 360 but in 8.4 release we we giving you a capability to uh, start and st stop these SQL jobs from the 360 portal itself so these are kind of you know uh, new features that we added by listening to our customers and uh, clearly we really think that we brought in which really matter to our customers so on the enhancement side if you see uh, these are some of the improvements that we constantly doing to the product uh, as Gauri said, we are constantly, I mean, we are targeting around two to three releases in a year and uh, majority of our work involves on the enhancements as well. So, uh, BizTalk Health Monitor is uh, something Microsoft started recommending recently and they brought in. Previously, they were using that uh, MBV. Now, we kind of uh, aligning with that. Uh, they deprecated the MBV, so we also no more supporting it. And we are giving a full-fledged support for Microsoft Health Monitoring. Now, we will be able to see the reports as well as monitor those reports based on the thresholds. So, the next, some of the usability improvements on the alarm configurations. Uh, for simple example is you uh, know the changing the name of the alarm so we identified these uh, small small usability improvements uh, uh, in our uh, alarm uh, ecosystem and we try to you know address them in this feature and in the previous release we kind of introduced the webhook notification channel uh, in this release uh, you know what we are doing is that uh, uh, the webhook notification was at the global level. I mean, you are setting a webhook notification across all the alarms, but many of the customers requested us to have that, you know, uh, ability to configure different webhook notification for different alarms. So that capability we brought in as an enhancement in 8.4. So as you know, we constantly we look into the performance uh, improvements, and uh, that's one of the things that we did for uh, Logic Apps area. So uh, these are some of the enhancements that we uh, did for uh, 8.4 product. So let's not uh, spend more time in the slides. Let's quickly jump into the product itself. So let me start off with the uh, file location monitoring. Uh, as usual, uh, we are aligning with the same experience, usability experience. The file location monitoring falls under monitoring section and uh, it's into the manage mapping section. We brought in a new menu item called file locations. If you click on that, you will be listed with the three tabs, the each tab for different protocols like the file, file covers your local or the remote file systems, and the FTP and SFTP. So in the file location, what we are doing is that we are automatically bringing all the ports uh, that are configured for the file locations. Same with the FTP and SFT. What we want to provide you is an ability on a single click, you will be able to kind of configure them. For example, if you see the third port is uh, not configured, when you click on that, it automatically pulls out all the details of the folder location that configured, and all you need to do is uh, set some thresholds. So for example, it's a send SAP share, you are sending it some files, but you don't know whether the target system is picking them and whether it is constantly growing. So I'm going to set a threshold saying that if the growth is, uh, the file count is greater than like say five, if you are sending a batches, it means the target system is not picking them up and you are saving this configuration currently. No, there are no files. So it means the state is healthy. So it clearly gives an idea whether the folder location is growing or not. And we also, uh, uh, you will, uh, we are providing the capability to look for only those files which match the mask that you have configured into the ports. So the same thing with the FTP. Uh, we have uh, provision for FTP or FTPS. Um, here the experience is same. You have, we are listing all the ports which are configured for the FTP and when you edit, 
when you, I'm showing you an example, when you configure, it pulls out all the details of the FTP which are configured under the port. Some information such as the username and the password, uh, we will provide you an option to update them here. Uh, we cannot store the password. That's the reason you will have to, um, you know, update the password out here. And uh, you also have capability to, you know, update the firewall settings. We are actually pulling them from the uh, port information itself, but uh, some of the options you can uh, change them all as well. So uh, it's the same. Uh, you can set up the configuration such as uh, here I have set up the warn me if the file count is greater than 100 and I'm saving this configuration. And currently since there are no files, its uh, state is healthy. So the SFTP, it's the uh, uh, same thing. Experience wise, it's same. Uh, we are pulling the details and when you edit, you will be able to configure them and now you know uh, you, you, you can also specify the security details and SFTP monitoring configuration as well. So in summary the file location is mainly like the idea is very simple uh, we want you to monitor any location it's a file local or remote or FTP or SFTP uh, as long as it is configured under a port you will be able to monitor them now for, for message count metrics. So moving on to queues, uh, we already had support for MSMQ and Azure Service Bus queues and uh, most of many of our customers were requesting uh, for IBM MQ and the experience was it is same. What we do is we are going to list all uh, the ports which are configured either for MQSC uh, which is a client based one which, which comes along with the host integration server or the built in one which is the MQ series adapter. So we provide support to both of them because different people are using uh, uh, different adapters there. So it, it, it's only, it only differs in what you configure uh, through our portal. Uh, behind the scene we use uh, the supported uh, .NET APIs for IBM MQ. So the experience is uh, very similar to what you have seen. We are pulling all the information. And uh, here, uh, if it is a MQ series adapter, uh, you will be able to provide the channel name. You will be able to change some of the information which we think which you should be able to. Um, and uh, you will be able to change the username and the password. And when you, so there are four metrics on which uh, you can monitor these IBM MQs. So, so the main, so the first thing is the current queue depth, so which is number of messages into the queue, and uh, that is typically the count. And every queue, as you know, will be associated with a backout queue. And you can also monitor for the backout queue depth. And um, every queue will be associated with the metadata called the maximum size. And uh, based on the maximum size and the current size, we are kind of calculating the usage of that queue. And uh, we know some scenarios wherein people do want it to monitor based on the uh, queue usage. So that all the four metrics uh, you will be able to monitor here. When you save the configuration, you will see the status of your uh, IBM MQ here. And anything you configure, uh, it will be available in the dashboard as well. And it's um, same, same and aligned with the monitoring capability of uh, BizTalk 360. <coughs> so moving on, we uh, in the operation section, we provided uh, uh, ability to, you know, uh, start and uh, stop the NT services. If you see, I'm giving example of the BizTalk server here. And when you click on that, we brought in a new tab called NT services. Uh, so if you see, if I click on one of the NT services, uh, you will you'll prompt it with actions. You now able to stop that service or the pause it or uh, restart it. And a similar experience as a grid, you can filter them. You can choose multiple and perform the bulk operation on them. So now uh, you you can use a portal to perform operations on the NT services. So the similar similar thing for the SQL servers as well. So in the SQL server as well, you we have this NT services. It's a kind of same experience for you, and you will be able to start and stop and uh, uh, resume and uh, resume operations on them. So this is on the SQL server and uh, uh, you know NT services, and uh, we were discussing about the SQL server jobs, which is under the SQL server instances section. And uh, when you click on that, we um, list SQL server jobs here and you can select them and enable or disable. So these are the only operations which you obviously perform 
uh, on any SQL Server jobs. As I said, uh, the monitoring capabilities were already there uh, in the previous versions. So, so the only thing we brought in here is ability to perform uh, uh, operational actions on the SQL Server jobs. So, and the last uh, one is uh, data monitoring on logic apps. So if you go to the data monitoring section, it's uh, it's not a separate section or anything. It's uh, one uh, another tab that we have brought into the data monitoring section. What it does is if you create add new, for I'm going to edit the one which is already existing. What we do is uh, you are going to choose an alarm, alarm obviously, and you give a friendly name for it and uh, you need to select the Azure subscription. So based on your configuration, you must be already aware if you are using uh, our um, uh, operational section or the uh, service bus queue experience where we are kind of listing, especially in the logic app operations, when you configure your uh, account details, we are bringing in all the uh, subscriptions under this, which are configured here. And when you select that uh, subscription, you will be listed with all the logic apps under the subscription and then when in, under the metric you will see various uh, metrics here. You know if you see the logic apps uh, metrics you will not know which metric uh, falls under which category. For example many of them are uh, count, uh, count and some of them are um, you know time based metrics. So we just kind of wanted to add a user experience touch here and what we did is that for every metric, we are specifying whether it's a count or whether it's a, a time metric. So uh, as I was talking to you, so run uh, you know, success latency or triggers started, how many triggers started, and you can clearly see you know, the billing information like billable action executions. This is one of the very important use cases because you might be creating lots of logic apps and you don't know uh, where your expenses are going to. So if you want to uh, have a control on that, you can set some thresholds on these uh, billable informations. So you are basically setting data monitoring on um, all this uh, information. Uh, the experience and uh, the rest of it, like scheduling and all, is similar to any data monitoring alarm that you would have created so far. Um, so it goes on. You can. Uh, I don't want to uh, jump into it, but yeah, clearly you can uh, perform all the uh, scheduling operations that you have performed for uh, rest of the data monitoring logic. So these are the new features that we brought in, and uh, um, talking about the enhancements. Um, we brought in Bistock Health Monitor under the Health Check Tools. If you see, um, we have got uh, Bistock Health Monitor. Previously, it was Message Box Viva. Uh, what we have is uh, you have the ability to run uh, BHM reports on demand at any point of time that you want, and also you can schedule them when you want to run by setting up the uh, uh, alarms. And what you have here is the number of reports that we already got. And one of the report, what we do, as you know, we are segregating those reports based on the criticality, uh, like critical errors and non-critical errors and the header information and summary are kind of segregated. And we want to bring your focus and attention to only those errors, like critical errors, which are important for you. So that's a, that's a, it's a similar, but what we have done is that we replaced MBV with uh, Bistock Health Monitor. So apart from that, some of the, uh, let me just quickly look into the uh, list so that I don't miss anything, okay? So the alarm configuration, uh, it's just the usability improvement when you are uh, creating the alarms, you know, in, under the manage alarm section, uh, when you click on one of the alarms, now you can change the name and save it. So that's uh, that was. Uh, I mean, like this, we have identified many usability improvements, and uh, we brought into the uh, product. And uh, also, you know, now in the notification channel, uh, if you click click next for each alarm, and when you go here under the notification channels uh, if you enable the i mean I, in this environment i haven't enabled the you know the, uh, uh, the webhook notification channel if you have enabled it so then you will have option to select the specific notification channel uh, notification uh, the webhook for a specific alarm so these are some of the improvements and as already said we constantly keep looking for uh, performance improvements in your uh, uh, in 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 our features and uh, for some of the performance improvements that we did uh, recently 
or pay for the logic apps, uh, the way that we used to collect uh, the information and how we displayed uh, and uh, we reduced the number of calls that we used to make to the logic apps. So we done a, um, a, a, a little bit of performance improvement on the logic app side. So I think uh, these are the, these are the things which I wanted to talk about. I hope you followed them.